Mola, brother Billy. Brother Anthony, good morning. So, uh, last week we got some news. One of the things about uh, getting older is that, you know, you lose friends and colleagues along the way. And, you know, sometimes it's, well, most of the times it's sad. But you know what happens too much when, as you get, as you advance. Mm. Anyway, um, on the occasion of the transition of uh, our brother, our Pan-African brother, Alambe Brath, who mm -hmm. passed last week, uh, mm -hmm. I, uh, I wrote some stuff. Now, Alambe is a, was a truly extraordinary person, uh, and they have been many times since the 80s, you know, that I've been in, in the presence of, of this great Pan-Africanist, Alambe Brath. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I first really started uh, dealing with them in uh, about 1982 uh, as a recording, uh, recording his community events. He was the head of the Patrice Lumumba Coalition uh, out of Harlem. And, um, and uh, it was interesting because at that time uh, we would record these, uh, these forums and, and, you know, try to disseminate it. This was cassette days. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, uh, Alambe and Samori were two that would always give these uh, po basically political forums, you know, consciousness raising forums for the community. And uh, so, I was there, but a lot of people would start taping them, would tape them. Um, but the funny thing is that uh, I, was do, I was doing radio at the time, and, and then Lombie was on radio, and, and Samori was on radio, and I was uh, um, basically helping out uh, Bernard White to the program called Emanations. But in recording for Bernard, I would share tapes with, uh, with both Lombie's program as well as Samori's programs. Um, uh, but uh, I had to. It was back then. It was the funny thing. They were so poor, they couldn't even provide us with tapes. And so uh, we would use our own tapes. I was poor, too, at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, but, you know, I, I don't know what that was all about. Anyway, but it, sometimes they would lose our tapes. Mm -hmm. So then I organized folks so that we would, we would uh, get the master tape, and then we would give them the best copy possible. But we all would retain our tapes. So I started this group, I mean, uh, Melvin Simmons. Uh, we started this group called The Sound Gatherers where basically we all knew each other. So if we needed somebody, because you might take this form in Brooklyn, somebody might be taking a form in the Bronx, somebody might be taking a form in Queens, somebody be taking a form in Harlem, whatever. And so we knew each other, so we would trust each other to, um, to hold each other's number, to, to make copies for each other. So it was a good concept, and it's going to today. Sound gathers still exist today. Mm -hmm. So anyway, the, I, I was interested about my, 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 uh, Alambe, I really marvel at his, his, at his jazz record collection. He had an amazing collection. I mean, he's the first one I learned about, like Dexter Gordon, you know. In fact, in fact, he was the first person, not, not just jazz, but he was the first person I, I learned about, uh, when I learned about South African music. Ladies, big, black, black Mombasa. So he would bring these records in and play them on the air. So he really exposed a lot of us to the, the, the wider, what they call, well, the mother tongue, with the wider diaspora. Anyway, let me get on with it. In honor of this uh, great man, um, the unrelenting brother for our freedom, mm -hmm. I, I offer a poem. It's, a, a, it's called a Gonzaga. Now, uh, Gonzaga is a 49-word uh, poem of seven lines, with each word containing no more than seven letters, the exception being uh, proper names. Now, the Gonzaga um, is an African-American verse form of praise. The okay? Gonzaga is a, well, basically is a Swahili, is a, the Quran is a first fruit, and the Sada is principle. So, you know, first, first fruit principle, first principle. Now, it was created in 1995 by a, by a noted poet, amazing uh, poet, uh, Eugene B. Redman. He's out of East St. Louis. He's a poet, in fact, he's the poet laureate of East St. Louis. And uh, he's also an emeritus professor of, uh, of English at, uh, at Southern Illinois University there in East St. Louis. Um, now, the form was developed in honor of the celebration of Kwanzaa. Um, and we'll talk about Kwanzaa some other time, perhaps maybe at the end of the year. Um, then, now, this poetic form adopts uh, the number seven from the, from the Kwanzaa's and Guzu Saba, the seven principles. And it also embraces the roots of Southern African, of the of Southern African tradition of the praise poem. I always love praise poems when you start something, the guy goes, I love that. Mm -hmm. 
Anyway, so on, on the occasion of a, a passing, here's a concept for Brother Lombi Breath. He uh, came to this planet, to this realm in 1936, and he uh, made his transition uh, last year, I mean, last, last week, I should say. And um, so this is the concept. I'm going to the poet Anthony. Uhuru was never enough for African you, and Cooks and Malcolm and Marksman too. Black beauty, your call to our nation. Our African voices mark your praise oration. Your African thought guiding many a minds towards the fertile music of our times. Now wails through heights of our sublime. Mm -hmm. Go in peace, Brother Lombe. Continue to uh, inspire us and watch over us. We really appreciate the time that uh, we've had with you mm -hmm. and, uh, and all you've done for uh, all who are, who are in sync with freedom mm -hmm. and uh, prosperity for the masses. Mm -hmm. um, um. I responded to that message by saying. You responded to the old I sent this? Yeah. Oh, okay, the Lombay message or the. Yeah. yeah. Paper, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. That uh, Brother Anthony, suddenly you followed Brother Lombay. And after this beautiful oration in his honor, you would have followers. May you so get your message. <laughs>